Okay, today we're at Bear Tooth Fly Fishing and uh, we're going to tie one of my delectable patterns and it's called a Mega Prince Nymph. And here are a couple examples. Uh, this particular one I tied is an egg-headed version that we like to fish in the spring and the fall for trout and steelhead. And then the two other variations uh, are with a copper bead head and then the other variation is a tungsten copper bead head. And lastly uh, we actually have a um, epoxy crystal flash wing case in, in addition to those variations but the one we're going to tie today is, uh, is just the basic variation which uh, we use for a squala nymph and uh, uh, stonefly nymphs on all the freestoners in uh, uh, the western rivers. Um, we're going to start with a, uh, this is going to be a size 8, and we've got a streamer nymph hook, and I, I think you can read, uh, it's a 2 extra heavy and a 3 extra long. And what I like to do uh, with that hook, uh, you can either buy them bent or not, and I like to bend them between my thumb and forefinger about two-thirds of the way up. And when you have stonefly nymphs, they, they, they can only crawl on the bottom of the rivers. And when they get dislodged, they kind of roll up and they're curled up a little bit. That's why I like to bend the hooks. Uh, they look like a natural insect uh, that way. And we're going to put the copper bead head in here. I like to put the copper beads in the palm of my hand and just thread them. And put it in the hook. We've got some brown 6-0 Danville thread. I like the smaller 6-0 because what we're going to do here is create uh, a little saddle with some ice stub in the peacock curl color. And I'm just going to put a very small amount on the thread. I'm going to create a little ball and what that's going to do is going to prop my legs up. I'm going to put some legs in front of the bead. And I just got a little ball of dubbing. And then the legs we use for this are the silly legs in the barred uh, pumpkin green and orange. And we've got a strip here. And what we're going to do is uh, I've already cut uh, cut too often. I like to keep them together. That way it's a lot easier to uh, uh, have the fly uh, symmetrical. And these legs, uh, they like to curve upwards and then conversely they curve downwards. I like to have all the legs curving up and away from the shank of the hook and the bend of the hook. That way they don't get fouled around the bend. And I like them to move in, in uh, they create movement by them wiggling and moving in the water. And so we're going to go ahead and cut that. And they're moving upward there. And I'm just going to put a couple loose wraps. Clip the excess. We're going to bind the back of them little legs down and pull them up. Pull the thread right up to the little ball of dubbing. And you see when I put the thread there, how it separated and splayed the legs. Because the tension of the thread bringing it down into the dubbing, that's what creates the separation. Now I'm going to pull the copper bead right over the thread and right up against the silly legs. I'm going to take the thread and just move it right around the bead. Wrap it a few times and you know, go ahead and take the thread all the way back to the end of the shank. We got, uh, we got the tail and this is a grizzly uh, dyed brown uh, little plume I'm going to put on. And we'll go ahead and uh, tie that in. And all these materials, uh, when I tie them along the shank here, I'm holding the thread between my thumb in uh, forefinger and I've got a couple 
I've got a couple loose wraps and then I, I put uh, put a couple harder wraps down and, and that's how you get it to uh, be attached to the hook specifically where you want it to be. And the other thing I really like to, to do when I'm, I'm tying bugs is uh, specifically I like to have the scissors in my hand and be able to not have to keep reaching for materials and stuff. Uh, having the scissors in you, your hands makes the tie-in flow big time. And now we're going to go ahead and uh, continue uh, with these, uh, these two strands of legs. And I'm going to tie the whole fly with just the two. And I'm going to go ahead and tie that in now. And nice thing about the legs is you can just cut them to length really like that. Okay, we've got our legs tied in. Uh, our next thing here is uh, we're going to have some uh, medium copper wire. All the different brands work. And uh, we're going to go ahead and the copper wire is going to serve two different purposes. Uh, one, it's going to make the peacock curl in this particular fly bomb proof. And the other thing it's going to do is prop up uh, the tail and the legs when I wrap it forward. And the other thing I like to use is tin. Tin, uh, I've got amalgamated tin used on all my specific stonefly nymphs. And uh, this is some 025 tin for this uh, size 8 fly. And there's two different ways to wrap this. Uh, one is to wrap it and spiral it. Um, I like to I like to wrap it uh, along the shank of the hook, not wrap it, but tie it in. And that way it flattens out the, the stonefly nymph to its natural shape. And I'm going to tie it on each side of the shank. And uh, you can just break it off like lead. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and tie it in on, on the other side. And this really, when the fly is wet, you can see the flat nymphal shape of uh, the use of the tin here. And uh, the difference between tin and lead in a fly, um, I liken it to, uh, it'll be the same weight as the lead if I use a tungsten bead versus uh, a brass bead. So it's pretty neg negligible, but uh, it doesn't impact the environment. And, uh, and if you tie a lot of flies, it doesn't impact you by absorbing the lead into your, your skin. Okay, the next uh, process here, we're going to select some peacock hurl. And uh, we've got some strung, strung hurl here. And uh, for this size of fly, I, I like uh, 8 to 12 strands. And we're just going to grab quite a few here. Um, because these stonefly nymphs, uh, this is a squala and uh, brownstone imitation, so they're they're pretty chubby little bugs. And uh, go ahead and tie that in, bringing my uh, thread about two thirds of the way up the shank, and I'm going to add my last leg now. So we've got legs in the front for the tail, and we've got one uh, two thirds of the way up, and. Uh, I really like that. I, I like a lot of legs and a lot of movement. And like I said, uh, I'm going to tie this with the curve going up. And you can see that. And I'm going to figure eight that. I'm just going to bring my thread forward. And if you want to cut the legs and shape them, you can. It's not necessary. Now you can do it after. I like a little electrical pliers for hackle pliers. Uh, I've been using them a long time. They're really cool. And uh, instead of my fingers on this, what I like to do is go ahead and grab the peacock curl. And what you can do with it, you can kind of make a few twists in it. And it'll act like rope and then the, the fibers don't get crazy on you and want to go in a whole bunch of different directions. 
because they've got a few gentle twists to it. And that really, uh, really makes the fly go easy as far as turning it forward. And uh, putting one little extra wrap around the, behind the legs to prop them forward so they don't get uh, fouled there around uh, the bend of the hook. And we're almost done. And two or three wraps will secure it. Then you can clip the excess. And now here we're going to show you the use of the, the copper wire here. I'm going to counter wrap this backwards and it's going to go twice around the tail. Now that first wrap you can see how it propped the tail up and it propped the legs up. And we're going to go twice and you just keep tension on it and and I'm just going to try to create a nice segmented body here with the copper medium wire. And when I'm tying copper off, I'll usually go two turns at the head. And it doesn't really matter the size. And that way, if you do two full wraps, you're not going to, you're not going to, have it come on unbuttoned on you. And the other thing is, I'm trying to show here the use of the bottom part of the scissors to cut wire, not to damage the tips of your your uh, your scissors. And uh, we're going to go ahead and secure that off. And now we get to some of the fun part. Um, all my flies uh, usually have legs in them and. A lot of them in, involve soft tackles. Uh, this specifically is a uh, is a speckled henback. They're readily available. Uh, normally they're five to six dollars, and uh, they're like Hungarian uh, partridge soft tackles. They they really move. You got a lot of different color combinations, and I'm going to select one here for a size eight. And what I like is they're natural colors with a lot of modeled, uh, a lot of modeled webbing in them. What I'm going to do is pull off the fluff here, and I like to tie all the soft hackles, the Hungarian partridge, and uh, CDC, anything I'm going to uh, tie with. I like to tie them in at the tips. That way you can, you can tie small flies or big flies. Uh, the hackles have the smallest uh, barbules at the front. So you can tie an 18 or a 20 or in this case I selected a bigger hackle with uh, you know size ranges uh, from 6 to 8. Uh, so I like to tie them in at the tip. And I, I'm giving myself a little room for my head here. A lot of times when people tie bugs, they, uh, they get through it and they don't leave enough room at the head. And you always have, have to leave enough room to finish your fly off. And we've got a soft tackle, I've got some white biots coming up, and then I've got some dubbing. So I want to I wanna create a little space for all that. Now this is, uh, this is a technique that Jack Gartside showed me when I was in my 20s. And um, this is how you fold and follow a soft tackle. As I turn it, I'm folding it all, I'm pulling it back towards the bend of the hook. I'm folding it, I call this fold and follow. I'm folding it and I'm following it as I turn. And uh, that strokes all them soft tackles backwards so that uh, when they're in the water, they pulsate and move. And uh, that's what you want them to do. Okay. Now, as an added feature, when I tie these soft tackles, after they're tied on, I usually I'll run two or three wraps of thread over the top of them to make them kind of bomb-proof. And... Uh, 
that's what we got going on. Now we've got some white strip goose spiets, and uh, I've selected two, and a lot of people tie these differently. I like to tie them on individually, and I like them to face skyward. Some people like to face them downward. Um, on this big and nymph, I like them to face up, and I like them long. And we're going to go ahead and tie the other one on. And uh, they're pretty easy to tie on. And they can be adjusted. Um, that looks pretty good to me. I like them splayed really hard. And now that they're bound down, they're not going to move. I'll go ahead and clip off the excess. Now this last technique is a, a technique that I've used uh, it migrated out of my leader company. I, I started making braided loops uh, for the end of fly lines uh, since 1982. And that's when this product migrated into my fly time. It's called All Purpose Instant Crazy Glue. Readily available, uh, exceptional product. And this migrated into my uh, fly time by accident. I hate glue in the eyes of hooks. It really just pisses me off. So with this technique, there is no glue in the eye and there is no thread heads. We're going to create a head uh, of dub material on any fly. Big, small, midges, salt water, makes no difference. It's the same technique I use. And the other benefit of this is if you want to finish a fly off at the end, back towards the bend, the middle of the hook or the front of the hook, you can finish a fly wherever you want. Whereas traditionally you've been really kind of limited uh, with a whip finisher and uh, a thread head uh, to what you can do. But this kind of technique's just opened up the opened up the tie-in for me where I can really use my imagination. Well, we're going to go ahead and cover that thread head, which I really don't like. And we've loosely put on a bunch of dubbing here. I don't like to put dubbing on in thick clumps. I like to put it on very uh, sparsely and then taper the body or taper the head the way you want it to. If you put too much on, you can't really taper it. And by overlapping the tapers, you make it bomb proof. Now, here's the trick with the super glue. I'm going to put a little amount just on the end of the dubbing. And as you bring that dubbing forward and it comes in contact with the other dubbing, the fly is done instantly. And there's no glue in the eye of the hook. And uh, the fly basically flows. With a dubbed head, I started the fly with dubbing and I finished the fly with dubbing. And I really like that. And this is a this fly is a great example of blending natural and synthetic materials, um, new and old stuff.